we're going to turn a bathroom cabinet knob. It could be a knob for any door, and uh, I'm going to walk you through the steps that I take to make mine. Um, I've just finished a cabinet, so I'm making a, a door knob for that. It's very quick, very simple. I've got a piece of wood that's one and a quarter inches square and two and a half inches long. And this is what I'm going to be making. It's very simple. It's got a, a dome on the outside, a cove here, a little foot here, and then a stem that goes into the door itself. So I'm going to walk you through the different steps that I take. And there are different ways to do this. People will have different methods. I'm using what we call a pin chuck or a screw chuck on here where this feeds into the end of my blank here. And I don't have a tail stock. I'm not using the tail stock for this at all. So I'm going to set up for this one. If you don't have one, there are different methods that you can use to do this. I'm going to find the center just by going corner to corner on in two directions here. I'm going to use just an awl to get the exact pinpoint of the center. I want to get it as close to central as possible because it's balanced when I put it in the chuck that way. And I'm going to drill this out with a hole. I've got tape on to show me when to stop because that depth is the depth of the screw that I'm using. And then I'm going to thread this onto, that, onto this stock here. I keep it as square, I look for the long axis of the lathe, hold it as square as I can, and rotate the chuck into the wood or vice versa. I can do it the other way, I can turn this one. It's much easier with the leverage I get on the larger diameter of the chuck. And I keep going until it seats fully against the chuck so it's got no gaps on any of the facets there. And now it's centered on there. Now we want to look at a little uh, health and safety here. I've got the tailstock well out of the way because I'm not using it. This is my fence. This is what guides or holds the chisel, the, the gouges when I'm working the diameter down or developing coves and beads. Um, I make sure that this is good and solid before I start turning. So there are some features, health and safety includes wearing a dust mask, wearing eye protection and so on. So face protection in my case, I'm going to use a full face shield with a mask, with, an extra, with a, a filter that filters the air coming to me. So I've got my speed set on the highest speed because this is a fairly small, this is a very small diameter. So I can go as high as I like. When you turn the bigger the diameter, the slower the speed usually until you've got everything balanced. When you first start turning, it may not be perfectly balanced. So we make it balanced by using the gouge to develop a, a perfect um, spindle that's balanced on the center of this chuck along the center of the lathe. So we're ready to get started. And I've got myself, I just made a storyboard here more to help you and my audience and for something I've just written on this. So I've got a piece of wood square, like I just said, rectangle that's in the vise. And I want to turn it down to a one inch diameter first. So the first thing I did was set my calipers to one inch. That helps guide me when I start to do the turning. I've set my fence. This line is just below center because I'm actually using a bowl gouge to make my cuts. My opening cuts are all going to come off this one gouge, which is a very practical gouge for this. But you can use different tools. You can use skews for this. You can use whatever you want. I'm going to just start, start up just to check everything's centered. It feels solid. Everything's in a good place. This is my mask. This is what I'm going to use. I'm switching on the filter. It's a little bit awkward. But now I'm in place, I'm happy. First of all, I make sure that the tool rest is clear of the material and set to the right height, in this case, just a little below the center. I'm using a bowl gouge to take off the excess material to get a parallel round, but use whatever gouge you prefer. I use calipers to guide me to a diameter of an inch and then work parallel along the length from that point.
and measure five eighths of an inch in from the end and mark it with a pencil as the lathe rotates the work. Then from that line, I further five eighths and mark it again with a second line. From there, I mark three thirty seconds further in. Then one final pencil line, five eighths of an inch further in from that. The first line marks the beginning of the domed end of the pull. I follow the arc I've decided on in my mind and bear down on the bevel to ride the bevel of the gouge to get a consistent flow all the way through to the point of the dome. This can sometimes take two or three passes to get to the final level you want. Here I'm creating a hollow we call a cove. Starting from the large radius down into the cove into the bottom and then the same from the other side to create a valley. I set the caliper to 5 eighths of an inch for the middle of the valley. Then I work it down a little bit at a time until the caliper just slides over. For individual knobs, the diameter isn't critical, but if you were making, say, 10 knobs, you'd want them to be close to exact. Then I set the caliper to 3 quarters of an inch, which is the diameter I reduce the knob to at the foot of the knob, marked by the second and third pencil marks. Now I've reached for a parting tool which I use to reduce the diameter square onto the material. I use this to put a foot onto the knob that will butt up against the door style later. Beyond this the stem is 3 eighths of an inch in diameter which enters a drilled hole in the style of the door to secure it in place. I use a 10 mm or 3 8 of an inch wrench and place it against the opposite side of the stem as I turn the diameter down to size. Once the wrench slides on exactly, I turn the remaining stem parallel all the way along up to the final mark. Move the tool rest to the right out of the way for safety. I use a two-handed grip when using the sandpaper, holding my right hand with my left to give me a steadied security. I start with a 120 grit sandpaper and move on to around 240 grit to smooth out the surfaces. Plain shavings are great to burnish and polish out the wood using friction. And with that, I've completely turned out the knob ready for use. So there we've got a knob 
And um, all I've got to do is part this off, but I'm going to apply some finish to this next. That's the, the next stage. So I'm going to take some shellac first, and then I'm going to apply a couple of coats of a water-based finish. So I'm using the shellac first to raise the grain, to seal it, and add a little touch of color to it. And then I'm going to put two or three top coats of a water-based finish, and I'll show you how to do that now. So I've just got a small piece of rag. I'm going to apply shellac first as I think I feel like it adds a little bit of color, but not too much. And I'm going to switch on. And that's it, basically. I leave it for just a few seconds. So it's drying the whole time. And then I go in with a second coat like this. And I can apply just shellac if this wasn't if this wasn't going to be used in a bathroom cabinet, which is what I'm going to use this one for, I could just apply shellac and build up the coats, two or three coats that way. But as I said, I'm going to be using a water-based um, finish that gives it durability and it's resistant to water, which is what I really want. I'm just going to use some furniture polish now. I've got the coats on, I built up the layers, and I'm just taking some furniture polish, some soft wax polish, and I'm applying it with the steel wool. What this does is the wax covers the surface and the steel wool cuts into the surface. It just gives it that edge that I want. So a little bit of polish on here, a little bit of pressure. Once that's done, I can go in with a soft cloth and polish it. That takes care of that. And my stem the is half an inch long. This little section in here is half an inch long. Now Often we'll take a parting tool and we'll part this off. If we've left enough length on the piece of wood, we'll part it off. We'll use the chisel to take it off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to saw it off. I've made my mark. I know where my uh, screw chuck is, so I'm going to saw through here. Like this. And there it is, that's the, the finished product. I'm very happy with that. It makes a nice little button handle, a bit button knob. And um, I think it's very nice. I think it's perfect for what I want. Mm -hmm.